morning, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, I, I guess this is not the best time after you had your break and then and now it's been digesting. But uh, bear with me, and uh, I think we're a bit you know, running past the time, so I'll try to be brief. Alright, so uh, first I'd like to thank Figi for inviting me today to, to share with you some of what we do. Uh, my first identity is that, you know, uh, I, I'm actually a US prof, uh, and uh, for the last about 10 years or so, I've been teaching intro programming. Right, uh, but uh, right now, I'm also, I think Dr. Wei earlier, Dr. Wei is there, hello, uh, mentioned, uh, I'm also actually with MOE part-time, I'm actually the Chief Software Engineer there, more or less, I run the engineering team. Uh, as a CCA, uh, I also help CBDD teach, train teachers. Some of my trainees are actually in today with us. Very nice. Okay, so any, uh, so just quick show of hands, any secondary school teachers here? One. Some of my trainees. Okay, those of you who are secondary school teachers who are keen to teach Python for MOE, you let me know. Uh, we have another course starting in January next year, so you can come on, 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 uh, on course and do that. Alright, so let's begin. Okay, before we start, uh, this is me. Uh, I have currently two girls. I've uh, got a new uh, two month old, uh, and I'm a prof at US class. So, so uh, we'll have to find we part time. Before we start, can I just get a show of hands? How many of you are from our secondary schools? Just to check. Secondary schools again? Industry. Any industry people? Police? Police. Okay, in this case, where are you from? Tatman, eh? Mr. Key students, right? Ah, very good. Okay, so that's a sense of your audience. Okay, very good, Nick. Alright, so, so today uh, I will just share you two things. Uh, that's not a lot of time, huh? Just two things. First of all, I will tell you a bit more about Python and NUS. Uh, so it turns out that I was supposed to start teaching Python and NUS two years ago. Uh, and the other thing I'll talk to you, to tell you a bit more about is how we do it a bit differently with this thing called gamification. Next. Alright, so first, why Python? Okay, next. Okay, so it, it turns out uh, that uh, I, I was a functional programmer for, for a while. I, know. I, I used to teach uh, this scheme class at NUS for like six, six, seven years, six years now. Okay, so so that was what happened for many years. All right, when I first joined NUS, I started teaching this scheme class. Uh, it follows on MIT, uh, SICP, uh, Structured Interpretation of Computer Programs. Uh, so I taught for many years. Okay. Uh, and, and and basically it was kind of cool. Uh, doing it. Uh, but how do you know scheme here? Oh, very good, very good, okay, very good. We can sit around and discuss Ski. Uh, ski is kind of cool, uh, but it's a lot of practices, right? Uh, and, and there's a lot of uh, criticism, uh, that's a little bit outdated, okay? So, so what happened uh, about two years ago was that uh, we, we decided to, to, to kind of con you know, find something different, okay, to, to do. Uh, and. Uh, so, so what, what I did, okay, currently interesting story, okay, I have my colleagues at US SOC here. Uh, interestingly, SOC mean the CS program we're still teaching intro programming in C. But uh, after doing Python uh, scheme for a while, right, I decided to try something different. And, and what we did was we, we, I started teaching the science students programming in Python. So sort of like trying to make it like you know. Uh, but luckily, it, it worked out fine. Of course, the, the thing was that I didn't actually know Python. And so, unfortunately, as the kid says, this thing about teaching them, learning the, the Python tools for them, that's what I kind of did. You know? I, I kind of like started you know, two years ago and said, okay, let's do Python. Fine. So, two weeks before I started school, I started learning Python. Okay, but then I was like, okay. All right, so so uh, basically, what, what we teach uh, is, is kind of uh, is a kind of overview of the program methodology. Uh, there are many concepts that I try to teach them. Uh, I know some of you look at it and it's overwhelming. Uh, so I, I like the very kind RP way, which is one module a day, very gentle. Mine is called the shock and awe, overwhelming, overpowering. Okay. So we have two hours of lectures a week. Okay. Uh, general complaint about my teaching is too fast. But I ignore them anyway. We just go. Uh, after that, I have one hour of uh, tutorial or recitation uh, where I teach personally or my senior TA teachers. Uh, and we do this, okay, uh, I, I don't just fancy me for this thing called cognitive apprenticeship, uh, but generally what I do is I go to class, about 25 students, I give them a problem, say, hey, how, you know, and then I open idle and we just code, uh, okay. Uh, part of it is also, okay, there, there are a few reasons. Uh, first of all, I think the key thing about, okay, well, because I, I start off as, as a schema, uh, so I code out very short, uh, you know, like six months long. The problem is that, you know, the students look at the problem, they start, they, they cannot, don't know how to do. They see my students, they start again, like obvious now, you know. So, so the, the problem is, is really, 
uh, giving the solutions uh, is, is actually useless, actually, at some level. Uh, and interestingly, I have the practice of giving solutions for everything, right? So all my homework, all my uh, homework, I do give solutions, so they copy. I give all the, all the exams, I give solutions. Okay? But the solutions are obvious to them, right? The problem is that when they see the problem, it's not obvious. So doing this live coding has two advantages. First advantage is that it allows them to see the process of the thinking, right? You know, I have this problem, I show you how, how you actually do it. Recursion, the two problems, the two steps, first the base case, then the recursion steps, like that, right? And then the other second interesting thing is really speed. Okay, if you flash PowerPoint, uh, frankly, the speed is very fast. Okay, you just stop, and then you just, you know, overwhelm the students. So the, there is this uh, advantage of slowing down by doing the coding as well. But I'm actually still quite fast, uh, so uh, then there is a balance in this track. Okay, so I mean, I don't want to go through the sorry, sorry, I don't go through the whole uh, topics, but generally speaking, it looks overwhelming. But uh, the basic focus of the class is all the basics, right? like the functional abstraction, uh, you know, the iteration, some recursion, uh, data abstraction. The rest of the stuff on top uh, is mostly just examples. Okay, uh, because my my clicks in one o two o two o one o will teach more on uh, advanced like sorting and searching. Okay, thanks. Okay, so also the reason why I uh I guess the, the question was really, you know, we've got to switch out on scheme. Uh, what, what is it that we can continue to preserve the goodness of scheme without, uh, and, 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 and pretend it's not modern without losing the essence? Uh, actually, there were two obvious alternatives. Uh, one was Python, the other was JavaScript, uh, which I kind of did like, uh, I thought it was kind of gross as a language. Uh, so, Python is the way. So, basically, simple syntax. Uh, and an advantage, my view, okay, this is going to get religious because there are, well, I suppose foreign language is not so simple an answer to, 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 to this fact, but uh, the basic idea was that if I do Python or Scheme you know, or JavaScript, uh, we are able to basically not have to deal with a lot of the plumbing. Uh, like Java, you have like, your class, uh, you know, your C, you have your main function, uh, your, your, your include, etc. Like and a lot of this kind of stuff that we can you know, ignore and focus on programming. So I think that's the reason why we chose Python. I mean, I, I, just, I thought it was kind of cool and I just tried it. It worked out well. Okay, so, so now I'll just quickly talk about the second part, which is I think quite different from what everybody else does. Uh, it's this thing called gamification. Okay, thanks. Okay, so, so let me explain to you the, the whole story now. So this is like a few years ago in 2010, there was this lady called uh, Jane McMonagle. She's actually a uh, game designer. She gave this tech talk. How many of you watch tech talks? Uh, okay, those of you who don't watch TikToks should watch that because they're cool. So this girl was giving us talk about how games games can save the world. Uh, and basically she built this game called uh, Urgent Evil, which involves some World Bank thing and then they did some social good and apparently it worked out, uh, it's kind of cool, okay, thanks. Uh, and, and I was like, well, it doesn't really work, no, no, I was kind of wondering. Uh, basically as a prof, I'm just skeptical, uh, frankly, you know, I, I don't believe stuff, but they tell me stuff I don't believe. So I was thinking about that, thanks. Uh, but but then, that year also was when I was teaching uh, 101S, which is a scheme class for the fifth time, and I was like, bought to tears. Huh? So I was thinking to myself, okay, what, what can I do differently? How can I do it differently? Uh, and, and so thinking about what we've been we'll be doing, I realized the problem. Okay, basically, you know, we have problem sets that are about two weeks, in, okay, that's about 13 weeks in a semester in US. We give them like one problem set every two weeks, so it's like a total of seven problem sets. Uh, and unfortunately, what I realized was the following, okay, was that normally yeah, you two weeks to start here, that's about, okay, about two days, uh, okay? So the basic thing is that uh, it, 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 I realized that it doesn't matter how long you give them, as long as one in two days is okay, right? So, so this, this is interesting in the sense that, uh, okay, the trouble of programming, uh, if you teach programming, and many of you will understand, is that we deal with this spectrum of ability, right? Your good, really good students are frankly 15 minutes scouting when they finish. Then the rest are struggling for 8 hours. Right, so, so you have this spectrum. Uh, so the, the good ones, the really strong programmers, 2 days no problem. But the trouble is the ones that are not so strong. All right. Then they start late and then in the end they have trouble. Uh, either one or two things they don't finish, or they, they copy. Uh, right. so, so the point is how do you deal with this things? Uh, so, so what we did was, uh, in the past we have seven problem sets, okay? I, I do this kind of thing like seven to six, uh, okay? So 30% of CA was problem sets, right? And they dropped the, the, the worst one, uh, and kept their participation. But then what we did was we converted it into a new system whereby it's this kind of experience point system. How many of you play games, uh? 
so few of us go to shy to admit. Okay, then my answer is okay. But you may not play games, uh, but I guarantee you one thing that's true. If you're teaching your kids today, 95% of them play games. Uh, those who don't play games are lying. Okay? So, so, so basically, the, the basic thing is that it, it just turns out uh, that our kids are uh, today are very well trained in playing games, right? And so what we did was we converted the whole system into this game system. Okay? And how does it work? Uh? So uh, if you play games, you'll know that the games are still quite experienced points, right? Okay? So what happens is that it, okay, the homeworks are called missions. So they do missions, uh, then they get some experience points, right? And it turns out that I also have these things called uh, side quests, which are optional homework. That means they don't really have to do, they have to do they have to do, right? And if they do some more, then they will level up. I mean, they, they will get more experience points. And then after that, we have contests as well. Okay, some kids are really fast. Okay, so contests are homeworks whereby they compete each other. So there's no finish one, because you can always be faster, right? You can always build a faster, build a faster car or something. Right, so they write code and they compete. So they can this is soak up all the time they have. Okay, uh, next. And then uh, for NUS, I don't know how the RP, la, but I think you all can possibly go to class, right? Uh, for us, and, uh, unfortunately, very free, easy. Eh? So, you know, going go to class uh, is, 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 uh, is also a privilege. So, to encourage them to turn up, uh, we give them experience points. Okay? Uh, then after that, we also have online forums, right? And, and interestingly, it's a very, very uh, active, right? Uh, but the reason why we do it is because uh, we encourage them to, to collaborate and to discuss. And when they discuss, they ask questions, they, they also get experience points, okay? When they've got experience points, what happens that they will, they will level up, right? So it turns out that the way, okay, because I'm a prof, uh, I control everything, uh, the green. Uh. So uh, in my class, the experience point level at the end of the class is their CA grade, more or less, okay? So, uh, and then we built this very cool system with comics and everything, uh, and that, okay? Uh, and then the question now you're gonna ask yourself is, uh, okay, go. Does it really work? Uh? Okay, so, so let me just do some stats. Uh. So it turns out that. Uh, oh, oh, stop. Okay, so it turns out that at uh, NUS we have had this thing called IDLE for the longest time. Uh, in the past, what we did was that we get the kids to upload the, the solutions to IDLE. Uh. Now, it turns out that IDLE keeps track of all the timestamps. So I actually know for my past X years uh, which students end up when, right? Okay, so with that, so I go to IDLE, I, I download the, the the submission timestamps, right? And I throw to a TA to, to compute for me. And we found out that, okay, for the four years before this gamification thing, right, on average, students will submit homework about 15.5 hours before the deadline. Okay? So this is the average over all the students that, right? Uh, clearly, you have some, like the NS boy type 2359 on the dot submit, right? Like just before or not, Cinderella. Uh, then you have also the white side types who submit very a few days ahead. So on average, you have about one, one half. About 15.5, which is what normal, lah, right? You most students will do, like, will do it this way. So after we have this system, it turns out that we have actually uh, increased okay, the time to submission to, to about 51 hours, of, which means it's like from less than a day, you know, before the thing is due, they submit, we increase the two and a half, two plus days, which is kind of cool. So it's a sort of work, thanks. Okay, student feedback. Uh, 6% didn't like it, they, they new things they don't like, these are the conservatives, uh, they like old stuff, then, uh, next. then we have got 8% who don't care, uh, okay, <laughs> like that, uh. <laughs> and then it does not much of the thing, it's hard cool, uh, right? and then it's been going on for a while, okay. Uh, so uh, the original system was kind of fancy, kind of cool looking, but since then we have built a new platform called Cosmology, okay, uh, it is heavily used, I'm using it right now, next. Uh, and, and essentially, uh, this is what we do. You know, the whole platform actually drives all this kind of game fact behaviors. Okay, next. Okay, gamification. Uh, it's forum, and then it has okay, uh, still teacher interactions. Okay. You, sorry, uh. yeah. the three key elements are the gamification forum, and it's very uh, interesting. Still teacher interactions. I'll, I'll show you that more soon. Next. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. Okay. Uh, I think we can without time keep going. Okay, you know, just skip this part. Okay, so one cool thing for example we do is that I try to introduce to equal assignments. So two, three, anybody know this two or four eight thing? How many of you wasted your life on this? <coughs> uh, very good, right? So this is like a homework set. So in my one of the homeworks my students they actually have to write uh, this game. Uh, of course we give them all, all, all the graphics, uh, they just deal with uh, manipulating the matrix underneath. Okay, next. Alright, okay, so, so I can say all, 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 all I want, but you're not believing me. So let's hear my students. Okay. I have to say this is the most interesting module I have ever taken. Because the. Sorry, I have the sound. The when you finish your mission, then you finish your training. Sorry, sorry, uh, thanks a lot. Sound was working. 
you are, okay? Tired. I have to say this is the most interesting module I have ever taken. Because the course is built like a gate. When you finish your mission, when you finish your training, you get ESP and you get level up. You get higher than others, then it gives you a sense of achievement. Sorry, it was tested just before this and it worked. Ah, okay. Adapter, I see. Sorry. I have to say this okay. is the most interesting module I have ever taken. Because the course is built like a game. When you finish your mission, when you finish your training, you get ESP and you get level output. You are like higher than others, then you give you a sense of achievement. It's like a roller coaster, right? <coughs> it's a very different like um, cost dynamic as compared to other modules because in math is more like tutorial based and assignment based. For CS, the cosmology thing is very new to me. It's hard to explain, uh, but I really enjoy it. It's a favorite part. <laughs> Okay, so, so I didn't pay these kids, uh, I, I just dragged into the room, we recorded some things they said and put together a video. Alright, so, so with that, uh, uh, let me, I mean, we're short of time, uh, but I, I will just quick, give you a quick demo. Okay, it turns out that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm actually training MOE teachers. Uh, so, so this is actually the MOE teachers, you know, doing homework on, on, the, on the, the system. Uh, but let me just show you the, the course I'm teaching currently. Tomorrow is my exam in terms of. Okay, so, so this is the Python course that I'm currently teaching at NUS right now. Okay, so this is the, the system that we are using called Cosmology. Yeah? Now, the, let's just show you some quick features, give you three minutes or so. So, first of all, there's all these homework with commissions. Okay, there's a lot of it. Huh? Okay, so let's say I click on this thing. Okay, uh, I can see who has had who has not done work, whatever. Right, and then uh, if I click on this one, for example, okay, uh, okay, it, it turns out that you know all the code is all submitted here, right? Uh, and, and the TAs can actually uh, have an if annotations here, okay, to to tell the student minus one mark whatever what you did wrong, okay. Uh, the system automatically runs all the test cases with the usual public private test cases. Right, and then there's a comment panel here that allows you to kind of talk to the student, you know, uh, tell the student, discuss the student. So like we have Facebook, uh, right? Like right here, for example, you know, it says after this day happens, thanks for informing me, missed that out, whatever. So this is this allows the students to actually interact with the tutors. Uh, so interestingly, I, I don't create the homework, uh, I also ask my tutors to do it. Uh, next, uh, I have trainings which are automatically uh, just now what you saw the missions, which are humanly graded, manually my tutors go in there and grade. Uh, because I care not just about correctness, but also about style. Uh, then there's also all this kind of automatically graded homeworks uh, whereby, you know, essentially after every lecture, I have some simple exercises for them to try, okay, so that uh, I know that they understand what's going on, and they get a small amount of EXP for that, okay. And in this system, we will track every single submission. So the system will have some MCQs, uh, there's some coding questions, okay, it's not, okay, it's not, okay, it's not there coding, but for those with coding questions, essentially we will track every single uh, answer they made, okay, and the way it works is that if they submit early, like two days after lecture, they get 100 EXP, if they submit later, they get half price, okay, so we encourage them to do homework, so this is trying to address the problem of, you know, how to make them do work, okay, even though they are not in class, okay, uh, what else is new, so, so this is kind of cool, so we have, of course, the achievements, Achievements are little badges, huh? Okay. Uh, like, wait, what achievements? Sorry, it's loading. Okay, so you are these badges, right? And let me just show you one quick. Okay, this one, this one is kind of interesting. Huh? You see, I, I scroll so I finger tired, right? You see, you know, this this right side is the, all, all the requirements. 
Uh, it turns out this achievement is called OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Uh, so it's actually, this time compiles every single thing that they can do in the system. Uh, it turns out every semester, one of those students to do this, I just started compulsive the gamers. Everything also, every cycle system must do, everything else to uh, But, but they, they, they work quite hard. Okay, and then there's a little bot, obviously, whereby they can actually, uh, oops, little bot, where they can compare themselves with their, uh, their peers. Um, yeah, so, so that, that's kind of, uh, Cool. Well, the leaderboard, right? The top few students they will work very hard and then they compete, right? Uh, the bottom few students uh, feel very stressed. Okay, so they, they will basically be okay. I mean, it's good and bad. Uh, the top few students are excited. The bottom few students feel stressed. Uh, but at some level, that's intentional. Uh. You want to make sure that those are lagging behind feel like they need to catch up, right? So the leaderboard, uh, we typically show only the top ten, uh, top fifteen, or something, uh, You know, so we, we don't embarrass the the people behind publicly. Right, we embarrass them publicly, uh, privately, so they feel embarrassed themselves, and hopefully they work harder. Uh, and and uh, sometimes I complain about it, but it seems to work. So, the, the, the thing that I, I'm most uh, excited to share with you about is actually this thing which I call the staff leaderboard. Uh. Okay, so this is, this is actually private to the staff. So, what I do is tell how the system works. Uh, when the students do homework, they submit an answer, right? Email is sent from the system to the tutor saying, hey, you know, your student has submitted to work, please go grade. There's a link there, they very convenient one, and click on it, opens to the page that you need to grade. Okay, they grade already, they submit grade. Okay, then the system will send an email to the student saying, hey, your grade, your homework has been graded already. Right, please go and see that, right? Uh, the time from when the student submitted to when the tutor submit the grade is called the time taken to grade. I mean, it's all obvious stuff. Uh, so in, in this table, you see, uh, you know, how many uh, different tutors and different number of students. Because some people have the uh, students dropping out at the mark. But on, on the left side, you can see number marked is how many assignments they have marked. Okay, uh, and then they tell how many students they have. But the third column, the fourth column here, uh, average time per assignment. You see that my my top performing tutor, he can grade assignments within 50 minutes. Okay, so basically, if, if you submit homework, right? Okay, within 51 hour on average, uh, you have the thing graded and given to you. Okay, uh, and it's actually, you know, the, the first few are uh, tutors, uh, you know, the, the number seven is in my TA, TA did chill, so you can do it one day. Okay, the, the tutors are very, uh, very and two, okay, so you do it within, you know, maximally like nine hours. So basically, what thing we have done is that we have also significantly reduced the uh, lag time between the grading, okay? Alright, so, so that leads you, there's a lot of other features, but I, I wouldn't go into them. Uh, because of lack of time. Okay, so let me just quickly end uh, by highlighting one or two key things. Uh. Now, the, the key thing about teaching, frankly, um, I, I think it's common for all teaching, not just programming, is that fundamentally we are dealing with the problems of management motivation, right? Uh, it, it turns out that there are not many students who are raring to go and do homework on them. How many of you are students? Uh? Don't have right. You've got outside the Google Street, something is wrong, okay? So the trouble is that this don't have everything wake up and want to do homework. Huh? Okay, so so the trouble is, you know, how, how do you get them to do homework? And, and the pro programming is a problem, right? Because programming is actually a craft, right? It, no matter how clever you need to put in effort and do the thing to master it. Right? Uh, so so how, how do you actually convince the students to do that, right? So so much of gamification is really uh, the realization that we can exploit, uh, you know, the students' uh, intrinsic the kind of game, you know, need to play games and, and, and they are, they are well, they are, the fact they are trained by playing games okay, to, to do that, right? And, and the, the thing is that it is not a silver bullet, however, okay? Teaching is finally a human business, a business of humans, uh, not, not machines. And, and the thing that I want to highlight is this, uh, is that if you do these uh, techniques, uh, uh, you must understand that there's a danger that you know, because they are now driven by your extrinsic factors. Okay, so it's very important in the class to, to make sure that they actually uh, are doing the right things. Because it's quite a disaster if all every day they're trying to do this thing, copying answers just to you know level up, right? It's not a learning material. So so there is this this danger, uh, and and pretty much uh, that's it. You know, I, I think I'm rather to say, but you know, we are a little bit running short of time, so I don't need from lunch. Any any questions? And, and interestingly, I actually do the, 
the programming uh, by example thing, uh, so I think that really works quite quite well. So to work on what the kids is. Yes. Yes, sorry. Excellent question. Okay, so uh, the, the, the initial system called Jedi Academy with all the cool graphics was built in six weeks by my tutors. I, I have very good students, okay, I, I, I'm very glad that, okay, to be honest, uh, and so see, and yes, as you see, it is quite a good school. I have very good students. Uh, I can hack together the initial system in six weeks, the initial first version. Uh, but I'm a graphic designer, everything goes different. But subsequently, the code was unusable. Uh, so cosmology was a rewrite, more or less. It was actually an FYP uh, over two years. Okay, so the cosmology version one was FYP written by two of my ex students over two years. So one, one started off the initial, second one added the extra stuff. Interestingly, uh, since last year, uh, since last July, we are rewriting cosmology V2. Uh, so hopefully, with the next uh, few months, we will launch the next version. The next version will is a properly engineered version. Uh, that by real engineers, because I have engineers now with me. So the initial one was uh, hacked together in two years by FYP students. The new one is engineered properly by engineers. Uh, we'll finish probably in a few months' time. So it's, it's about one year of effort, the next one by about three or four engineers. It's, it's quite a serious system. Yeah. Any questions? Yes? Uh, what's the implementation language? Rails. Sorry, not Django. I, I know you are very disappointed. Uh, uh, cosmology written in Rails. Why Rails? Because my kids like one Rails. I, I'm actually agnostic, you know. It's Rails, back end, uh, front end is bootstrap. Uh, next question. Open source, MIT license, which says that if you use it, you carry on. It kills you, it breaks things, not my problem. Yeah, I might get license. So yeah, it's open source. Is it used outside of CSOS? Is it used outside? Excellent question. Okay, let me just show you the demo. Uh, in terms of cosmology, it's actually quite popular. Uh, it's used by a large, quite, okay, quite a number of MOE teachers already. Uh, but, but let me tell you, I mean, let me, let me, let me something up. Because it, the original, the current version now you see is uh, V1, is actually an FYP. Yeah. It sort of works, but scalability is a problem. So I also don't want to be too aggressive in pushing out uh, the thing because I, I'm using it myself. If, if, if everybody is too popular, everybody uses it because it's my class, I'm in trouble. So I've been quite you know, slow in pushing it out, but it's been used by quite a number of schools. Has, interestingly, has been used by geography teachers. Has been, the amazing thing has been used by digital teachers. So they can even use this to teach it. Okay, uh, yeah, so programming works, bit works, geography works, um, yeah, science sort of works. There are quite a few teachers that are using it already in the system. Okay, yes, question. Okay, so, so the so just make sure I understand your question. Your question is, do I recommend using Python as uh, first programming languages, first programming language? The answer is yes. I, I think it's actually excellent. I think Scheme is great too, but Scheme is a bit as even more esoteric than Python. Uh, Python is actually quite popular in certain domains. Uh, and because I teach mostly currently the science students, it's actually very useful for science because there are a lot of libraries they can do broad. And also data, uh, data what's it called? Visa uh, A, business analytics. So it's, the Python is actually good for data analysis. So it's actually applicable in that sense. In terms of commercial development, Django uh, is used. I, I wouldn't say it's not popular, but it's not. I think Rails is more hotter, you know, but Django works as well. So uh, I, I think Python is useful. Uh, and many of the big companies use some Python somewhere. Now the question, next question is whether it's easy to switch over. The answer I think is yes. Okay, if the students uh, learn programming very well, I think language is okay. I'm personally language agnostic. Right? My belief is that we need to use the right tool for the right problem. Uh, and the truth is that I started learning Python two weeks before I did the teacher, right? and it was okay, right? you know. So, so, but of course, my skills didn't come from Python, they came from Scheme and other languages. So, the, the, the transfer of knowledge, I think, is easy if you master it properly. 
I think I mastered it okay well, so it's fine. Uh, so fundamentally, I think the basic, and, and to some extent, uh, in another quick point I want to make is this, in teaching programming in Python, I avoid teaching all the Python specific stuff. That means I'm trying mostly covering the, the more common concepts. Uh, Python like this comprehension, I try not to touch because I'm like, you know, it's kind of esoteric to, you know, it's kind of using Python, uh, which is not very applicable in other languages, uh, a little bit hard, a bit confusing for beginner students. So the focus in teaching will be on the more common concepts uh, across all languages. So, and, and the point is this, uh, is that we do want them to trans transfer that knowledge. SOC, for example, you know, we do, eventually they will do Java, which is important, right? So uh, my belief is that I think we can do quite well with Python, followed by Java. Okay, thank you very much. Any last questions? I think I'll run out of time. Okay, yes, okay. Thank you, I can chat after during lunch. Okay, and I think I hand over to the next speaker.